time? Where does it start? Where does it end? Did time exist before the Big Bang? If the Big Bang determined the limits of the universe, is the universe the limit of time? Is there time out of the universe? Is time expanding along with the universe? Is time a dimension like left and right? Is it possible to go not only forwards in it but also backwards? Or even stop in it? Does the time depend on space? What is time really? Let's talk about it. At university, in classical and quantum physics lectures, I was very obsessed with time. According to the masters of classical physics, Maxwell, Galileo and Newton, time was constant and independent of everything, including Plato, Aristotle, Socrates in ancient Greece, and even for the Polish thinker Copernicus, time was absolute. Time could not be interfered with, and it had to flow the same for everything in everywhere. Philosophy, of course, laid the foundation for science, but we will look at time from a scientific rather than a philosophical point of view. One of the first scientists who dared to ask questions about time was Galileo, who lived in the 16th century. It was his misfortune to realise that the Earth revolved around the Sun, contrary to what had been believed until then, and to announce this to the world in defiance of the Catholic Church of the time, which held that the Earth was the centre of everything, and to be sentenced to house arrest for the rest of his life. This discovery, for which he paid dearly, would become the greatest reference for astrophysicists after him, and the 17th decade would be the century of astrophysics. The 17th century Newton would carry forward Galileo's legacy and develop the theory of gravitation through his study of the motion of celestial bodies, because had to explain why these celestial bodies were orbiting larger celestial bodies than themselves. The theory of gravitation was sufficient to explain the fall of the apple, but it did not make it possible to describe the deviations in Mercury's orbit. Newton was a devout who believed that God was responsible for these abnormalities. Because of his faith, this intelligent man refused to ask crucial questions right away because he believed that they were within God's jurisdiction. According to him, time was a construct that God as well. Therefore, he used time only as a tape measure to quantify things. It did not even occur to him to relate time for the deviations of Mercury's orbit. He was short-sighted in this respect that he believed without doubt that time would continue to exist even if the universe ceased to exist. Later scientists theorized that there was another planet called Vulcan near Mercury. Wobbling of Mercury could only be explained by another planet's existence. In other words, being affected by the gravitational pull of another planet next to it. But no matter how you looked at it, there was no sign of another planet. The only thing that happened was that Mercury was moving in a ridiculous way, and the theory of gravity could not explain it. There was no other planet, no reason for Mercury to move in defiance of gravity. Something seemed to be wrong, or seems like God's intervention, as long as time was treated as a constant in the equations. Now that we've laid out our questions and problems, I'm going to request you something difficult. I want you to completely abandon your beliefs about time and your perception of time, all of them. I want you to forget that the life you spend on Earth, from birth to death, means time, or handling it as an arrow from the bow of the past that shooted into the future, so that I can tell you what time really is and not just a quantity as you sense. This is critical because your perception of what time is has not much to do with time itself. According to the German mathematician and philosopher Leibniz, time was the way man organized past, future and present events in the mind. The German philosopher Immanuel Kant, on the other hand, agreed this independently, that time is something in man's mind and varies for each individual, and therefore their both's vision of time were more concerned with how man manages his perception of time than with what time itself is. All explanations were insufficient in some way. Mathematicians, philosophers, theologians. While the thinkers were exhausting themselves and each other through ages on this issue, we finally came to year 1905. A great observer, 
realized the truth that was right in front of all of us, actually. Perhaps he was treating the phenomenon as a brave questioner. From the inexplicable movements of Mercury to why the perception of time varies according to the individual, and finally to the answer that tells us exactly what time is. This man published four stunning researches in 1905. Now we are talking about one of them, theory of relativity, and of course we are talking about Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein visualized a scenario in his head. It involved a train and two people. One of the people was on the outside of the train and the other was on the inside. The train was traveling at high, but very high speed. He imagined two lightning striking the front and rear of the train at the same onset. At the moment of the lightning strikes, the observer, who was outside in the midpoint of the train, observed that lightning struck the front and back of the train at the same time. Compared to him, the person traveling in the high-speed train and sitting also in the middle point of the train would see lightning strike first the front side and then the back side of the train. Because for the observer in the train, the train is moving to meet the flash at the front and moving away from the flash at the rear. While lightning struck the train, the event is the same for both people. The only difference between these two people is that one is moving at high speed and the other is standing. And the way two people perceive the timing of the event is different. Both made the correct observation within their own frame of reference. More you accelerate, more you approach the speed of light. As you approach the speed of light, time slows down for you. When you reach the speed of light, time literally stops for you. With this thought experiment, Einstein recognized that time is not absolute and our perception of time depends on our speed. Right after these, he analyzed Maxwell's equations. Then he realized that the only constant in the universe is the speed of light, approximately 300,000 kilometers per second. Let's take another example. Imagine that a train traveling at a speed very close to the speed of light is being built on Earth. It moves from east to west along the equatorial line as the Earth rotates and circles the Earth seven times a second. While you are on this train, time will slow down for you. The world you step into at the end of your one-week trip in this train will be a hundred years in the future. Einstein looked back at Newton's laws. According to Newton's gravitational effect theory, bodies gravitate to each other according to magnitude of their masses. For example, the Earth, being a big body, attracts an apple. The apple also attracts the Earth, but because the apple is small and the Earth is big, when you throw the apple in the air, Earth would not leave its orbit, but the apple would fall to the ground. Therefore, large celestial bodies did not orbit around small ones, but small celestial bodies orbited around larger ones. For example, according to Newton, the Sun, as a large body, moved the Earth and other planets on its axis in this way. This was an incomplete or even wrong point of view. Just like observers standing in different positions cannot agree on the exact position of an object, we cannot agree on timing when our speeds are different than each other's. Time was as relative as left and right, up and down. Time was a variable which depends the observer's speed. Time was as much a dimension as length, breadth and width were dimensions. Which means the time is not independent of space. That time and space are woven together like threads forming a fabric. This is called space-time. Yes, we need to go far, far outside our perception to internalize it. Time is a dimension. As the universe expands in width and length, time is a dimension whose shape can change according to the mass of the objects the universe contains. In other words, small bodies orbit around larger bodies, not because of gravity, but because they are caught in a vortex of twisted space-time. In this way, we can understand why Mercury wobbles. In this way, we can also explain how light cannot escape from a black hole with enormous vacuum power. All these celestial bodies do not move in emptiness but in space-time, as if they exist in a dense fluid. The dense fluid in this hypothetical is space-time itself. And yes, cosmos is not empty. 
Whether you call it a dense liquid or liken it to a fabric, the things that take place in it affect each other. Think of it like the waves created on the surface of the water by a stone falling into the water. Since space and time are part of the same fabric, we should be able to detect the waves of the curvature of this fabric, for example when two black holes collide. I'm sure you've seen this equation somewhere. Where E is energy, M is mass, and C square is the square of the speed of light. The square of the speed of light in the vacuumized environment indicates how much nuclear energy falls per kilogram. Without further ado, it tells us, energy and mass are the same thing. Even small masses are equivalent to enormous energy. For example, if we could convert every atom of a paper clip into energy, we would get a TNT explosive of 18 kilotons. The energy that can be released in the collision of two black holes, depending on the black hole, is probably greater than the total energy of the stars in the entire visible universe. You would be able to observe the trace of such a collision even from the other side of the universe, thanks to the waves emitted by the collision in the fabric of space-time. This was Einstein's theory. A group called LIGO measured gravitational waves and won a Nobel Prize in 2017, years after Einstein theorised how space-time is intertwined. I can't even find a word to describe this man's perception. It was the Big Bang that created our universe. The four dimensions we know, and even dimensions beyond them, are what belong to this universe. What exists outside this universe is unknown, but time is a reality that belongs here. If one can move faster than the speed of light, according to the equations of special relativity, time starts to flow backwards and one can travel to the past. The problem is that the amount of energy required for massive objects like us to reach even the speed of light is infinite. We know that there is no infinite energy in the universe, so in practice no massive object can reach the speed of light. Photons have this speed because they are massless. But the fact that we cannot realise an event does not mean that it cannot be realised in another reality. Indeed, in a letter dedicated to his friend Michele Besso after his death, Einstein said, He left this strange world a little before me. This does not mean anything. People like us, who believe in physics, know very well that the difference between past, present and future is only a stubborn illusion. The past, the future and the present are the same thing. Whether you think something is past, future or present is only a matter of perspective from which you look at it. So let's finish like this. Let's appreciate all these geniuses who have opened our reality to us. Einstein, I'll tell you about this man at length. Especially him, the great man who was obsessed with the truth, who asked daring questions. We're glad you existed. You're existing and you will exist. Before we go deeper into this subject, let me tell you that next week we will take a journey into the impossible state of reality. We will talk about a universe that came from non-entity, our universe, other possible universes, and the laws that built such constructions. We'll talk about quantum entanglement. Then we will meet next week in the quantum world. Until then, all the best.